Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. With the onset of our first ever Fantasy Critic League, this has been a fun and exciting year for us. Get our takes on the latest games, industry news, and weekly league updates by joining us for our live recordings every Thursday night at 8pm Central on twitch.tv slash 4playerpodcast, all spelled out. Audio episodes launch on all podcast services Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Central, along with the VODs on YouTube, but Patreon and Twitch subscribers can get the episodes a day or two early each week. No matter how you prefer to tune in, just know that everyone is invited to jump into our lively community Discord at discord.gg slash 4player. But enough about that, let's get down to business. Alright, hey everyone, welcome to 4player Plus. It is... August twenty fourth, twenty twenty three. What are you laughing at, Brad? What are you laughing? We barely started. You're already laughing. Continue. Shut. My name is Nick Henderson. I'm your host this evening. I am joined, as always, by Brad Simons. Hello. Nolan Hedstrom. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And Chris Davis. Good evening. And uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we haven't done one of these in a while, but hear me out. Uh, oh, we've yeah. been playing. We've been playing Baldur's Gate three. For a while, it has consumed us. It has, it, and and th- this week is where kind of like everything starts to come out, uh, and it's just gonna. But he, none of us have really had a chance to like play any of this stuff yet, right? You dated our timeless podcast series. It was uh, timeless. Stop. Aliens could have found it, you know, and have no no idea of when when we recorded this, and now you're dating with gross current events. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, But we haven't done a top three podcast in a while. So uh, while next week, I have a feeling we're probably going to be talking about some new games because Blasphemous 2 is out. Shadow Gambit is out. Armored Core 6 is out. um, And of course, Baldur's Gate 3 still exists. So we're going to have a lot to talk about next week. But uh, in the meantime, we are going to do a new top three recording. This is where we all sit back. We come up with a top three topic. And we're just going to run through our t- our personal list. Uh, and tonight we are doing our top three games slash franchises that we wish would get the perfect like indie spiritual successor. And this was actually an idea that Brad pitched to us. It was kind of inspired by the recent release of Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which is kind of an homage to Jet Set Radio. Well, um, very specifically, a homage slash spiritual successor. Right. Which is, yeah. Which these, ex- I mean, they're, this is by, by no means like the only one of these, obviously. Right, right. Um, we In fact, this was actually, for me, it was very hard to kind of like think of, because every time I would think of one, I'd be like, oh, that'd be a good one. Then I was like, wait a second. There are like a bunch of indie games that have tried to recreate this and That's have done true. it pretty well. They've done it That's pretty true. well. Which which was happening to me too, but I think the way you, you, you got to like maybe frame it to like help with that is to, like very specifically, look, this is the next one of these in all but name. You know what I mean? Right. Like there's a lot of games that are kind of like Metroid, right? You know, right. But yeah. So, um, I, you know, we're going to start that. We're just going to start there. We're going to jump in. Uh, I'm going to save kind of the fantasy critic. And like, I do want to talk a little bit about Gamescom, but I'll save that stuff for the end. So let's go ahead and get oh, through shit. the actual topic at hand. I know I'm mixing things up. Um, no, I wasn't prepared. Well, get ready, Brad. It's happening. You've okay. had all day. Um, we're trying to be efficient with time here. Also, just for anyone watching us live at home, I just want you to know if su- if the broadcast suddenly just cuts out, it's because we live in Texas and the whole state just lost power, <laughs> or something along those lines. We're, I know it's not gonna. I know it's not. There, there are. There is potential for rolling blackouts tonight because of ERCOT can't keep up with the fucking demand for electricity because we live in a hell dimension here in texas so um but anyways hopefully that doesn't happen so without further ado brad i don't know if you want to do any more setup for this than what i've already done well i mean i think i feel like it's pretty self-explanatory you know unless anybody has any questions uh Uh, wait what uh what is the topic again shut the fuck up I can't actually I can't some he he delivered that with such gusto. I'm not really entirely sure if he's serious or not. Um Well, Brad, why don't you start us off by example? Okay. <laughs> Wait, do you do you really need to know the answer to that question, Chris? Just remind me. Top three like games. Top three games we wish would get 
it, the perfect indie spiritual successor, a la oh, yeah. Bomb Rush Cyberpunk to Jetset Radio. To be indie necessarily, but I, I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. so I wanted to, I wanted to kind of start this without going over my top three, but rather as I was trying to think of games. Um, I kind of started thinking about games that have had spiritual successors. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of them successful. Uh, some that come to mind, Ukulele, uh, mm-hmm. pretty bad spiritual, spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie. Okay. What do you mean, okay? Right. That was a bad I game. Mean, no. it, it, People that's, were, I mean, were really mean to that game. I do, think okay. the, I do think the reception of that game got better over time, but it it, it, it definitely sure. didn't reach the heights of Banjo Kazooie. That's for sure. It was okay, directly well then, a spiritual successor, though. For sure. Let's, let's talk about another one Mighty Number no. 9. How was that mm. one, Brad? That one was bad. <laughs> that one's bad. You should play Gravity um, Circuit. That one's good. Yeah. So, you know, then I'm, I'm, I was trying to, okay, what are some like, kind of good ones? Um, I, I thought about like Shadow Complex. Mm-hmm, um, obviously, mm-hmm. like, you know, a Metroidvania, not exactly a spiritual successor, but I mean, obviously in the same vein as a Metroid game uh, that was very successful or something like Stardew Valley, uh, mm-hmm. clearly a successor to like um, uh, whatever that game. Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon. Uh, thank you. Harvest Moon. Maybe the um, best. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and so like, I was trying to there have been oh, a lot okay. of successes and a lot of failures. Um, and it kind of makes it difficult. Like you said, Nick, sometimes I'd be like, oh, what if they did? And I'm like, oh, no, nope, that's already happened. Um, yep. And so it can be difficult. Like, do you consider like like Chrono Cross is not a spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger? It's, it's made by the same studio or like the same. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, I think um, I, depending on who you ask, it's more it's a sequel or maybe a bad sequel, depending on who you ask. Yeah. Um, also, you know, I was thinking this might sound like a kind of a I act my brain actually very quickly went to resident evil which seems crazy because mm-hmm. there's been a lot of resident evil clones no but 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 hear me yeah. out but there's been a lot of resident evil clones that don't quite hit the mark uh oh. but then i rem- but then i remembered signalis came out last year and that game was kind of incredible and i think that might be one of the closer to like original resident evil in a really unique and exciting I way i would say i would say resident evil is in the top five of like has Franchi- been done the major most. franchises where indies are in you know love making uh spiritual successors but, but so so but, so but, but they like actually captured it not and I, so here, here's a question on that nick mm-hmm. you know you thought about resident evil and, and so i started you know obviously when you say hey what's a, what what's a oh well, like your dream game or blah 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 you're you're you know th- spiritual successor to a game you would want you start think talking or you start thinking about games you like Resident Evil. I like Resident Evil. How, like, can you have a spiritual successor to a franchise that has like twenty games in it? It's hard. It's a little harder. I mean, it, yeah. I think. Like, I, I think. Pick one yeah, I think. Yeah, you have to say like Resident Evil One, like or a spiritual era. successor to Resident Evil One, like Tormented Souls, which came out a couple of years ago, was mm. very much kind of like a spiritual successor to Resident Evil 1. What and in a lot of ways... from uh, last year, the first person one that was pretty good? That was very oh, oh, Resident Evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, why am I... Oh, State of Decay. No, no, not State of Decay. Oh, State Nightmare Decay. Night... Nightmare Decay. Mm-hmm. Nightmare Decay, thank you. I, you, I guess bad, close. It's a bad title. Yeah, uh, it's a bad title. title. I had no idea what you're Tunic. talking about. Tunic being an amazing indie spiritual successor to classic Zelda. I think yeah. is is a good example. Sure. So yeah, um, I guess that that is a good example of plucking a game out of a timeline, a, a series of games, and saying, "Hey, this is what I want to represent." I guess in my game that I'm creating. So that that, right. that kind of obviously makes it difficult to, you know, you trying to like, oh, which one, you know? So I don't know. Anyway, okay. So you know, and I ended up. I started, I was like, this is hard. And I was coming up with a list. And then I ended up with like, I actually ended up with like a pretty long list. And then I had to kind of like narrow it down. But I have a lot of backups in case there's any overlap. So um, Mm. as I I started thinking about it, more came to light. But anyways, Brad, do you want to start us off? Sure, sure. I'll start us off. Uh, Yeah, I was thinking of like more unique games that I would love to just that are gone. You know, the franchises are gone. I was like, ah, and this will never come back. So so I I was... So I just wanted to bring that's what kind of Prince said in, in chat. And that's what I also originally thought as well. 
uh, was when I leaned towards, oh, a spiritual successor. It's probably something that's not around anymore right. um, because it's like, oh, I want a spiritual successor to Resident Evil. It's like, well, just wait next year till the next Resident Evil game comes out. There's your game. But, but I, I, I know exactly. what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You know, like if, if obviously if it's something that pulls from a specific one in the franchise, because obviously this franchise has gone a different direction. But anyway, what's up? Brad? So I think I think there's a lot stuff. of really good indie um, platformers of all <laughs> ilk, you know, your Mario 64 clones, your Banjo Kazooie clones, 2D, 3D. But one of my favorite that was very unique because while it was a 3D platformer, it had a very unique like uh, concept. You weren't just jumping around. No, you were no catching monkeys. Is. Oh, okay. oh I Ape thought about this too. From Mario Ape Escape. Oh. Ape Escape is such like a specific like twist on like the platformer genre and like that twist is what i think made ape escape special because it wasn't about just getting around it was about figuring out how to approach these monkeys how to catch these monkeys using your gadgets and like this shit was funny you know they the monkeys they, had, they, like, funny they made a spiritual successor to that brad it was metal gear well, solid 3 uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah have it has any re-release of that game ever had the the Ape Escape yeah, level? Oh, 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 only the original game had the oh, Ape Escape. Man. Is that new? Is that it's new fucking no, collection they're doing? No fucking way. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Uh, what about the remake? You think the remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 is going to have the Ape Escape shit in it? 100% no. 100% no. There. So when I say I want a spiritual successor, I want it to just be like you know raccoon escape or whatever right like it's 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 <laughs> like the, it's maybe even has some of like the same people involved that that sort of thing which which you see sure. these days with kickstarters and stuff you see with um you know like cyberfunk right mm -hmm. it like with the they got the composer from you know the jet set radio games and and i feel like having making the the, the idea of like catching things figuring out how to catch them using gadgets having like the really like like pretty clever, you know, sense of humor uh, with like the types of monkeys and also the little like blurbs about them, like the non sequiturs and stuff like that stuff was just so good back then. And I really miss it. And it's a franchise that has just gone for some reason. You know, they do, they did a lot of spinoffs and whatnot. And I could see a team really capturing what was awesome about Ape Escape in like a really good like I backed that Kickstarter, right? You know, so yeah, that's sure. my number three. Oh, awesome. All right, let's pass it over to Crispy. I don't know why you choose me second, but okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I'm right. Just um, For some reason, you just look like the most put together tonight. I, I don't yeah, know what it is. Uh, professional, you know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Oh God! Excuse me. Sorry. Um, the, I was making a joke. I was scared for a second. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what he's about to sneeze or what. Professionalism. Uh, I'm okay. Bless you. The show can go on. My first pick for a indie spiritual successor to a game I enjoy. Hmm. I um. I don't know this. Why did you pick him second, Nick? <laughs> yeah, know. why did you pick me second? He just asked uh, what the oh, topic was no, like five uh, Okay, what I'm going to say is Saints Row 4. <laughs> oh. Because that was the coolest Saints Row. That was the one where you had, like, superpowers, and, like, they kind of just went absolute ape shit, ape shit and were like, do whatever the fuck you want. We don't even care anymore. Um, I would love to see somebody make an open world game that had that same kind of like laissez faire Absurdity. attitude about like, yeah, not only not only are we going to make this like a full on, like pretty confident, like GTA clone, but we're also just going to throw this absolute absurd superpower system on top of it that like makes it like like it's a GTA game where like you never get in a car because why would you because you can fucking fly or jump over buildings and shit like that. They should just make a boys video like the boys video game where they just give like you a bunch of like superpowers that are absolutely mm, not kind of insane. <laughs> or something no, along those lines. No, I don't like that idea, Nick. Um <laughs> Well fine, but... fuck you too. <laughs> But anything I mean, like expert, I didn't even like Saints Row that much. So that's just okay. Me. But like, even you know, if you weren't invested in the series, Saints Row Four was like 
kind of fucking sick, all right? Even beyond even beyond the fucking superpowers and all that shit, that was the one that started with you climbing up the missile while they're playing Aerosmith. Like, so good. Come on, that was a good game. That was a good yeah. fucking game. Somebody should do no it again. Den- no one's denying that. I love 2, 3, and 4, to be honest. I was Someone should do it again. Well, yeah, I mean, Saints Row, like... Something that is something that has a little bit more verve than this last Saints Row they did would be amazing. But but the one that I want to see again specifically is four. The one where they just like stop giving a shit. So I think the problem with. Go ahead, Nick. No, go ahead. I was going to say the problem with the Saints Row that came out in 2022 um, is it's when, you know, the franchise got too big for itself. Uh, you know, one of those things where it became like, you know, you know, the the yes men in the conference room are saying, oh, this is what we need to do to to sell this game. And, you know, marketing uh, guys reviewed a bunch of stuff and they're like, this is what's yeah. going to make this game good. And they kind of lost what it's... Saints Row should be. Are you um, saying the new Saints is... Row is too woke? Because no, I've it, seen those it... articles. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Look, I'm not saying just, that. This uh, is the world we live in nowadays. <laughs> um. The the thing about that saint like that saint the 2022 Saints Row, mm-hmm. I played a bunch of it. It was fine. Like it, I I don't hate it. I don't have anything against it. It was pretty mediocre when I played it. I've heard that they've added and expanded a little bit, and it 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 it's a little more of a juicier experience now. But you mm-hmm. know, I mean, classic modern video game live, experience. We live it's in a post. We live in a post uh, Tears of the Kingdom world. You know, like what is. We got to open world action we games now. That phrase from our goddamn vocabulary. Please, <laughs> please, please and ban no. it. Oh. Look, it's it's Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate three. Like that's it. Video games are dead. Thanks for playing. Like, yeah, there's no point in going on from from there. Um, what do you? It's last, just really small question. <laughs> what would you do? Because if you wanted to make a spiritual successor to Saints Row, it was already kind of a spiritual successor in a lot of ways to Grand Theft Auto. What would you tweak about parody, it to make it? Like, yeah, what would you tweak about its concept? Would you stick with like the gang culture kind of thing, or would purple, you like try purple? I, you I mean, a, the, the gang thing, the gang thing was kind of fun, just in the context of like building your own. Like, if it were me, what I would do is I, I would kind of embrace that, but push it more towards the superhero, supervillain side of things, and say yeah. like you're not starting a gang, like you're starting a like a crime syndicate of like like supervillains. Like you Justice are League. you are you are professionally a supervillain, and you're hiring henchmen, not like gang members and stuff. Whoa. You know, gotcha. like, an idea just rad. popped into my head. It's like instead of like a boring Harry Potter game, like the one that came out this year, it could be a good what, Harry Potter game. What if there was just like it was like gang warfare, but like magic school kids? Dude, I mean, it, that would be fucking <laughs> sick. Are you kidding? You just, like, you just it would, would just be to, that like, sketch Hufflepuff from and, like, Keem Peel. Like, beat beat like, Hufflepuffs to death. Yeah. It would. It would just God. be that there, that Keem Peel sketch of like there, the inner city wizarding school. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God! I actually love that idea. There would be a gang called the Crips, but they're actually necromancers. Oh my god. That's pretty fine. I do. Okay. I'll give you that. That's just All right. Good. You made Okay. It. Handing it over to Nolan. Nolan, what's your first pick for the night? Uh my first pick um is going to go to uh a spiritual successor um to Eternal Darkness. Ooh. Yeah. So oh, I don't well, think we've really the, the closest oh yeah, so we there there was, yeah. But the the closest game I can think of that I think gave me similar vibes horror kind of spooky wise is probably like evil within uh the way mm-hmm. they handle like like the horror elements but eternal darkness was one of those games that really kind of like you felt like you were going insane as you were playing fourth it just like this yeah for so many fourth fourth wall breaks like things happening you turn and like there's a wall there and you turn and it's gone or like you know you 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 look and you see blood in the bathtub and when you look back it's gone shit like that like they did a very good job of like the creepy elements of like the, what the fuck did I just see? Um, and I, I, re- I really would like, mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say, would you just focus on that stuff in the house or would you also do those like artifact the like stuff? The missions where you're like, Oh, I found an artifact. And then you play a story about that artifact. I mean, I feel like if you're doing period, a true like... spiritual successor, you would want to like kind of capture that, but yeah, no, for well, sure. Um, but I think, I think, you know, there's the, that, 
concept of the game makes the possibilities endless uh, because yeah. you can kind of just do whatever you want with it, which is most likely, honestly, where the game kind of came from. It's just they they had like a lot of shit that they were like, how can we tie all these cool thoughts together? Oh, let's just have it, you know, be this. And um, it worked out know. for them. There have you know, been, I, I feel like there have been games that have dabbled in that fourth wall break and stuff. But well, here's the thing. There have been... There, maybe not so much the fourth wall breaking stuff, but like so much of what made uh, made that game really cool, like a lot of the stuff that no one was describing, I think has kind of found its way into like these just like really like, into kind of the PTs of now, right? So like the, yeah. the photorealistic horror games that I love so much. But it would be cool to see those ideas applied to something that embraces kind of like the uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like there's obviously there's two like the like the the, kind of like the more schlocky horror as opposed to like this sure. like super dark, oppressive, horrifying, keep you up at night kind of horror. Um, mm-hmm. So I, it, be, it would be really cool to see them kind of like pivot and take some of those ideas and do something more akin to to, to that, to that game, to what the original game was like. Um, good choice. Good choice. Um, where are we at? Chris Davis. Yes. Uh, Mine might be a little less obvious, uh, but what rude? What? Do you... No, I just <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it's probably just what you wouldn't expect. Uh, burnout. Burnout is a franchise burnout. that we have been missing out on no. for a very, 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 very. What's long that one time. bad developer who tried to do it? I expected you to say that. Telling, right? So that's, I, that's on my short list. So yeah. part nice. of the problem with this topic is that there is a development studio called Three Fields that is made up of X criterion people that have been trying for years to make their own knockoff uh, spiritual successor of burnout. No, and, and it's been mediocre every time. And I every one of them has been people. mediocre. But the interesting thing is that every game is slightly better than the last. They learn from their mistakes in this game and they build up from it. How and do we learn? Climbing out of the 60s one step at a time. Yeah, 61, 63, 65. They're slowly getting maybe, there. Maybe Burnout's just a 60s kind of game. No. It's how just, how no, dare no, you? I, I, th- I think a developer, a different developer could maybe like knock it out of the park, but that is something that is worthy of of that of that you know, spiritual successor treatment. Because I, outside, outside of that indie dev, I don't think anyone has done it, right? No, like, not even the crash mode. It, like it's too yeah. good of an idea. The crash it, it mode is, was so good. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy because like the tech has just gotten better. Like imagine how crazy the the crash mechanics would be. I mean, but that they're they were amazing the in like the, that you have to they were amazing you have to Paradise. develop yeah. those crash models and those those that that model alteration based on damage. Like that's not easy to program, man. You need it's, it's, it, engineers it's not, and a lot of good people. Yeah. It, like the crash mode was not even really a unique concept. I mean, it was like the implementation was amazing, but there've been games where it's like, you're just like fling something at a, an environment and you're trying to like cause as much yeah. destruction as well, you can. What was that PS3 game? Pain? Something like that. Pain. Pain was mm-hmm. one of those. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about kind of triggering. Yeah. I mean, I love that type of game, but man, the implementation and mm-hmm. burnout is burnout. You know, takedown is like, like a, amazing that that's a goat. It's a, goat. yeah, it absolutely. Um, is. Was burnout paradise the last burnout game? It was the last burnout game. I would, I yeah. would call it burnout revenge, but I guess some people would say paradise. I, if you, you didn't like, you didn't like paradise. Game. I yeah, like paradise. A lot. It was something, it was something different. The crash um, mode was gone. The problem with well, you know, Paradise we, we, was the variety of the of the tracks because it was built for an open world experience. Like yeah. you did play through a lot of the same kind of stretches of roads. So we did we did say at the beginning, kind of like this is not necessarily have to be indie. So you could extrapolate a little bit further. Like it'd be yeah. cool to like, look at what look at what um what's sorry what's the name of the team that did Dead Island Two and see how much time they spent honing like the gore like the which, dynamic gore which team shit are you talking about so the team that actually released dead yeah. island damn buster they, they, damn buster they they really oh. spent a lot of time making that like dynamic gore system super impressive so like i the same kind of like attention and 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 uh you know effort could be put into developing kind of a dynamic crash system i would imagine for a, yeah. and then have a smaller team work on 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 burnout like you know 
I don't mean to like draw the comparisons to Dead Island 2 because that obviously didn't work out so great in from a critical standpoint, but like it would be possible. And I think it would be damn impressive in a modern age to see see that stuff extrapolated out. Um, I mean, or you could just go ahead and give it to the spinoff studio. What was it? Uh, Ghost Games? Yeah, just give it to fucking Ghost Games. Let them just make a fucking burnout game instead of a Need for Speed game. And Oh, uh, I was like, what is Ghost go. Games making? They're uh, Need they for Speed? That. It was, they did that. They'd done that with a couple of those Need for Speed games. No, they, they made Need for Speed oh, games. Oh, Criterion they, made Need for Speed games. Criterion made Need for Speed. Ghost Games was spun off of Criterion. Okay. Criterion was basically reorganized and yeah. effectively not the same people as Dame Studio. Mm, mm. But like, look, they have everything they need to make a burnout game. Just make it a little bit faster, a little looser, and just mm. get rid of the officially licensed cars. Are you and they can do those the models. Mm -hmm. They can do those just crash make spaceships. Yeah, just fuck it. Just make up your own cars. Nobody cares about the cars. We're going to be destroying them anyways. Okay. Who gives a shit about the fucking cars if you're going to wreck them? Yeah, make, my... it, make it spaceships instead of cars. Make them all Teslas. My first pick for the night. Then they're going to crash themselves, Nate. Yeah. yeah that, that's a zero-player game. Um, My first pick for the night, I'm actually going to go with... So we live in a, in a, in a post... Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to say that. God damn it, we, Nate. I know. I'm sorry. I did this. Did that to myself. Um, the the quote unquote boomer shooter or the retro shooters craze is so big right now. Um, I would love to see a spiritual successor to Turok. Um And I'm not even necessarily saying turn it into a boomer shooter. I'm saying is that it not series already? Has, I mean, the original more than anything is kind is very akin to like what we think of when we think of boomer shooters, but. It it has tried to re evolve and rebrand and or not rebrand but like evolve into something different, two or, like twice, two or three times now, and it's failed every time. Uh, I'm thinking I'm looking at you Xbox 360 Turok, that like super you know they were going for like the super kind of like Call of Duty esque gritty, you know first person shooter with dinosaurs thing which did not work out Hell very well. Hell mediocre. Yeah, hella mediocre. Yeah, um, uh, even Ev in, yeah, and Turok Evolution before that. Um, I remember being so excited for that, and that just felt like a, that was just a wet fart all the way around. So like the series has just never recaptured what made the the original the, the first two games specifically uh, so great. And I would love to see it kind of someone try and tap. I mean, I, we're talking about spiritual successors, so obviously. I, I wouldn't want them. We're not talking about like an actual sequel to Turok, but like take the concept, take dinosaurs. Like so many of the, the there's a lot of indie projects right now with dinosaurs and like, but they're so focused on trying to recreate like Dino Crisis or like some weird like sur multiplayer survival thing. Like that's like half the games that are in development right now that involve dinosaurs. Well, so that's I would how you love attract capital right now. So sure, but that's not what we're talking about. I want to see somebody specifically taking inspiration from the original Turok. Think, think, uh, big open environments. Think, crazy weapons. Like the crazier, the better. Um, you know, and just and these like really elaborate levels and like mixing it with like science fiction and stuff. Um, I think it. I think it'd be. I think it'd be. You'd, I think it's a no-brainer. Um, there's still a lot of love and reverence for the original Turok, especially among, I see a lot of developers that, that work on games uh, nowadays that are, that are similar, that still constantly throw back and talk about how much they love the original Turok and Turok 2. Um, you so, on you know, that one. <laughs> wait, wait a second. You, you think I'm crazy, Brad? No, how many of these devs are talking about how much they love Turok? And you can't count Night Dive because they make Turok. They make Turok. <laughs> Speaking of Turok <laughs> Three, Turok Three is getting as of as of like two nights ago. Does they announced they're making. Anybody care about Turok Three? I'm like do, the only person on the it. planet. I'm the only person on the planet that cared about Turok Three and played it. Probably. <laughs> um, that's well, obviously an exaggeration, it, but it was also launched cool. very late into the N64's life cycle, and it had a more limited print than the rest of the series. So, like, not all right. the people actually got to play it. All I'm saying is the idea for Turok is very basic and could be could be tweaked and and twisted into something really new and original. And just considering kind of like the legacy of 
of that series has been like everybody remembers how crazy the weapons were and stuff more so than like the dinosaurs and whatnot. Like the cerebral boar is like everybody knows what, what I'm talking about when I say the cerebral boar. Just it's like iconic. get crazy with it, amp up the gore, like Not just find iconic. a really the only it, one people remember from the game. Shut up. <laughs> That's not true, um, but anyway, just get just get crazy with it. It'd well, be cool. It'd be well, cool. let me ask you this, Nick. Mm-hmm. Open world Turok game sounds great, but one of my ideas it's not even the open world, but like big open levels. Like that Turok one had huge levels. They were they were huge levels, but they were also very linear. To be right. clear, like only a few There's areas a like actually had room, room for like improvement. Stuff. Yeah, a lot of room for modernization. But one of my alternates for tonight was going to be Trespasser. And hmm. that is a game that would match up to what you want, minus the emphasis on combat. I think that would be a very interesting game. Well, I feel like that's... I feel like... Spiritual, I mean, Does that I count? Like Trespasser that was an are just game. like VR shooters. Just VR shooters are sequels to Trespasser, or successors to Trespasser. I never played Trespasser personally, so I couldn't. I can't really comment. But it, it was like a VR game outside of VR before VR. Was mm, mm, your mm, your mm. UI was either what your character was saying out loud to you, or you had to look on her body to see like certain stats. <laughs> Flashing me, no one's sir. face. But, like, this if is you, a win. Like, like her pan the camera tattoo, down to look at her tattoo. breasts. It had her her heart count to, to indicate how much life she had left. Was the game was awful, awful trash. <laughs> well, it was. Uh, There's so a whole story behind Trespasser and no, how no, we're, not, we're not here. Yeah, we've. Oh, this is not even a pick. What are we doing? My number two. <laughs> go, Brad. My number go. two. Somebody in chat. Are, you know what? I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do Twisted Metal tonight. It's not even on my list. Dang. Mm-hmm. It's not even on really? my list. My number two. Because that would be ass. my number two. Shut the fuck up. Shut the <laughs> fuck up, Crispy. <laughs> um, <laughs> My number two, l- let me set the stage. We get a lot of games like Zelda, right? We get a lot of indie games like, oh, Zelda's great. We're going to make a Zelda. 2D Zeldas, 3D Zeldas. We've seen them all in the indie space. 40 Zeldas. But, and I liked Zelda, 40 right? Zeldas. But, like, when I, but, <laughs> but when I grew up, I put away my childish things. And <laughs> you the PlayStation asshole. came out. And I was like, well, Zelda's cool. You know, I don't need Mario Kart. I have Twisted Metal. You know what I mean? Um, I I don't Start need Zelda anymore. Stars. I have Legacy of Cain. Blood of that Cain. was on my short list. Which is like Zelda for cool, edgy grown-ups. Um, <laughs> Jesus. It, it's not, but it's not just Blood. I, blood Omen popped in my head, but then I got to thinking about Soul Reaver, of course. And that's what I want. Soul Reaver is like a is like a it's like a 3D Metroidvania, right? It's like a Zelda game. It's like a dark Zelda game, which Zelda is like a Metroidvania, right? When you think about it. Right. I want a spiritual successor to that. Like I'm talking, you know, get Amy Hennig, get get, you know, former um get the voice actors who are still alive. Um Oh, that's nice. You know, to, to, together, do a Kickstarter. And, like, I want to see, like, a fancy... Maybe they're not vampires. Maybe they're fancy werewolves. But they have to speak fancy, damn it. And I want to see, like, a very dark, like, Zelda-y type game that's, like, overwritten, but, like, delicious. <laughs> you know? I want... I want... So, from, like, a, from like an... Like a... Like a... I'm not, talking about the way it looks. I'm not talking about the way it looks or the or or kind of like the actual subject matter from but like from a design standpoint. Are we talking about like a dark siders with like the gritty no, You're ruining it. Stop it. What? No, no I'm talk- stop it. I'm not talking about the way dark siders looks, bitch. I'm talking about specifically the way that world is designed and like mm, kind of like dark siders, but I'd say more like Soul Reaver. <laughs> you ever <laughs> played Soul Reaver? Um but um yeah. I hate you so much. <laughs> I just so want much. like a 3D Zelda game, but very dark, very fancy. I want like, you know, philosophical debates, you know, between werewolves or or aliens or whatever. Take Doesn't something other vampires. than werewolves. But but I mean, why not or... just be vampires, right? Just do a spirit. You know, Bomber Cyberpunk, just it's just 
another Jet Set Radio game, right? Like Bloodstained, it's just another Egovania. That's all mm-hmm. it is. They just don't have the license, you know? I want that for Soul Reaver. Get some of the original people. Amy Hennig, she can't ship a game. She hasn't shipped it. When's the last time she shipped a game? Ooh, they keep canceling her fucking games. Yeah. Um, you know, oh God, was it do a Kickstarter. Too? There's enough of us, you know, me and a bunch of British people love Soul Reaver. Um, so I, I say make it happen. There are dozens of you. Up. There are dozens, dozens of us. Of us. Uh, you know, I feel like I put Soul Reaver on my on my short list specifically because um I feel like it's one of those series that, that got away from me. Um and it's I've played a little bit of it. I haven't played a ton, but I remember being like kind of really in love with just kind of the vibe and the way it looked. But it's like I feel like I missed the boat. But see, so, so, so it would be cool. cool. One of the cool things about stuff like um, Cyberpunk, if you read reviews, or or something like um, like a Shovel Knight, right? Is it's like, well, it it's it pays like such an homage to like those old games, but there's a lot of like smart ways they've modernized it, so they're not as like frustrating as before, or they control better than they used to. So it really captures the spirit and the vibe, and it and it's almost how you kind of remember these games, but they're a lot friendlier to like a new audience, right? Baldur's Gate three, even right. Versus those old ones, which are really hard to go back to. I think Soul Reaver popped into my head almost immediately because, or Blood Omen, any of the Legacy of Kang games, because like control wise and stuff, like those games are really hard to go back to. And I think that, you know, you can make one that is very faithful, but like is like so much smoother to play. And it could, you know, make a lot of people, you know, I don't think they're ever going to go back, but you know, I think it could make a lot of people happy. You know, it can, it could bring the charms of those old games into like to a modern audience, which would be great. So, yeah. Oh, show. All right, crispy. What you got? Uh, my second pick is, a. I mean, it's a slight combination of two franchises, uh, created by the same developer. Okay. Um, but I would like to see a faithful spiritual successor to Halo slash Destiny. Mm, and yeah. what I'm what I'm looking for, and the reason why I say both is because there's a lot of aspects of Destiny that I really like that are congruous with Halo, but I don't think like the indie spiritual successor is gonna be making a full on like games of service game, you know. Uh, thank god uh, and then well, wouldn't sure, necessarily be, whatever be necessarily be thinking about like the 10-year roadmap for it from the well start yeah right it like not like this like big fucking like mmo experience kind of thing not it's not gonna have eververse and silver and premium currencies and shit like that but what's cool about both of those games the overlap is first of all the gunplay incredible in both uh the power fantasy that both of those games kind of uh, inhibit or inhabit um, Mm -hmm. is really Mm -hmm. potent. And they both have like this really awesome kind of vibe atmosphere to them. Like, like with, with like the, the kind of more traditional sci-fi like military sci-fi story that kind of like starts to bleed into this bigger, more somber epic kind of, like space fantasy you know Mm -hmm. like science fantasy thing um which you get that a little bit in halo and then in destiny they went like way crazy fantasy with it um there's like magic and gods and shit uh but yeah something that like something that is able to encapsulate like the really fun game gameplay like gunplay and ai of like a halo combat evolved or something yeah. but but also capture the basics that. In, a, in, a, in a way maybe maybe or and also capture that that kind of just really unique science fantasy vibe what um, if what yeah. if destiny but vampires you know, you know, maybe it's, vampires maybe it's vampires vampires cool. the solution to everything. Like, they like set in a town called Redfall. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fucking. Uh, that is not Brad. what Redfall is. First of all, you go fuck yourself, Brad. I know you're just being a little troll, but seriously, jump up your own ass and die. <laughs> <laughs> You've never played it. You don't know. <laughs> Whatever. But like, yeah, just Nick something might be that. Playing it. Like, January like. 1st. 
listen, like the gameplay, the game model, I know you guys look at Destiny and all you see is like microtransactions, multiplayer, raids, shit like that. I'm talking about the fucking right. sauce. I'm talking about the vibe. I'm talking about like like the fucking just aesthetics of that game are so mm. fucking cool, are so amazing. It is such a shame that it's like trapped in this service model game that is like falling apart. Like because yeah. like the lore the fiction the world the vibe of it is like unlike anything else out there it is i mean bungie has definitely done the done that kind of thing very well twice now so it would be cool to see somebody else kind of like hone in on on what on that sauce that you're talking about and and pull it off we'll see we'll see would be nice would be nice um where are we going nolan nolan you're next yo um, all right, uh, my uh, the second game on my list uh, of spiritual spiritual successors that I'd like to see um, is a spiritual successor to Mega Man Legends. Uh, you can call it Mega Man Legends one or two, whichever. Uh, there was one that was supposed to come out three never happened. Um, I think someone could undo what the failure of Mighty Number no. Nine uh, and take uh, the Mega Man series that everyone wants and and create a successor to that um i think it's a, a really good example Gravity circuit legends i mean just, just let that team just let that team, I don't even know if that team is yeah, i don't even know oh, if that right. team <laughs> oh game's so you, good. you and the four critics who reviewed it love that game. you, sh- you shut your mouth you shut your mouth that game is Look, there was a failed Mega Man legends spiritual successor kickstarter red ash right yeah. red ash yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. Oh, you, know, um, you just don't remember it. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. Basically, um, the entire scam. I, mm. But, uh, but I really, I really do think um, that there a lot of people would enjoy that. I think anybody who I've talked to who has spent any amount of time with Mega Man Legends games really does enjoy them. Uh, and I think there's you could have a lot of benefit, especially you know technology has come quite a ways. I would honestly say the only things holding those games back was, uh, you know, the fact that they were on the PS1 um, in 64, uh, right. obviously a little bit limited by technology at the time. I really do think yeah. you could create a fairly better open worlds, uh, bigger quests, bigger, you know, scene like stuff that happens, you know, the cutscenes uh, while they were fun and, you know, humorous. That's one of the things about those games was the story. The writing was really good. I really liked the characters. The Bond family was great. Uh, I would really like to see them back. Um, and, and, and I think. I don't know. There'd be, there'd be a lot there. I'm not sure why Zero Skies is honing in on this game, but he does say tell the Returnal devs to make a legend successor. I'm not sure what what the line uh, drawing so, in between Eternal is. But. So the, the only thing I could think of off the top oh, is just smart. the way. Yeah, how smart. Um, the, the, the way the, the kind of like, a uh, the mechanics work for like wet, the weapons, like the energy kind of like beams and stuff like that. That's very similar to how it was in Mega Man Legends. Well, like when you were fighting enemies, they would be sending out big waves of like, you know, bullet hell, like energy blasts and right. stuff like that. Um, and so I could very much see the connection there. Um, that obviously Returnal is a little more realistic, whereas Mega Man Legends is a little more, you know, comic you know yeah. like the kind of bright colors and stuff like that i'm definitely not um, poo-pooing but, the idea at this point like if, if that if that game was literally announced like housemark making a homage to Mega Man legends i'd be like okay i, I think it'd be that's great cool um but you know what one of the fun things about Mega Man legends wasn't just you know oh you know the the boss battles with like you know bullet hell or whatever it was also the fact that you were like you know go, going into like the 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 dig sites uh and you know going to find like money and you like you were like digging for like treasure and money and stuff like that you're actually kind of going off to do something that in these kind of like not they definitely weren't procedurally generated by any means but there was some a little bit of randomness to them um gotcha. and, and so yeah kind of going off to find treasure uh to to find like you know uh, parts for your buster or different weapons for your upgrades and stuff so i don't know i think i think i think it'd be good i would that love would to be see cool. all right uh chris davis what about you i'd kickstart that coming off of uh that. nolan talking about a capcom game uh i have another capcom game uh and it's just four syllables onimusha 
Oh. Onimusha. I mean, let's the be real. How many of, these... of the PlayStation 2 era. <laughs> I mean, how many of these games that we're talking about tonight are just games that we know are dead but we want to come back? Like, let somebody else I mean, make, make some of them. Maybe lots of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, the real That's problem is we, we keep getting teased. We got teased earlier this year, Nicholas. We nearly got... Yeah, no, we did. We got a game that looked like very much a repurposed Onimusha game called Path of the Goddess. And I'm going to be honest. The longer I watched that trailer, I was like, okay, I'm kind of hoping this isn't actually Onimusha because I don't think this is what I was hoping for. So I feel like we dodged a bullet on that one. Maybe. Yeah, not saying Path of the Goddess is going to be bad. New exciting <laughs> IP and you are being wieners. Hey, yes, I just... I don't, I don't see it as an Onimusha successor. I see it as an Okami successor. That's how I see it. No one so. said either of those words. It's just a new game, a new f- made, not even a franchise, just a cool new. Okay. Tell video. us about this. Tell us about your dream Onimusha successor. Onimusha just needs to be Onimusha one through three. Like we would, let's not talk about Don Dreams because that is a garbage video game made by people who had lost track of what they should be making. Samurai, Feudal Japan, Onimusha Demons, Tactics, Resident Evil esque design. Game. The they made Blade Onimusha Warriors, you mean? Smash. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. If I if 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 someone wanted to make an Onimusha successor, there, you, I think you do need to make a distinction between Onimusha one or two and three, because two and three are quite a bit different. I would I would gravitate more towards Onimusha 1 because it had so many of those like Resident Evil-esque design choices. Like it felt a yes. lot like exploring the mansion in Resident Evil 1. So I like mean, that's my favorite kind of video game basically. I mean, so like I mean that it was one of the iterations go. of Resident Evil 4. So Right. Like no, on- Onimusha 1 I think is probably the most level across the entire experience. And then Gen- Genmo Onimusha, the the port expansion uh, with the added mechanics made it a it little bit a harder, character action game. but also much more interesting, I think. Um, so, but do you I, want a survival horror or a character action game? That's I guess that's the only question I have. Because I feel like that's what two that's what the series became very quickly. Uh, I I think survival horror uh, left Onimusha one like two hours in, and it became a character action game. And I mean, but you're still exploring and finding keys and backtracking and doing all that stuff all the way yes. through from beginning to end. You absolutely were. So. Yeah. And you were still doing that in two. I just want to kill demons and suck their souls into my gauntlet. Like yes. I want to hold a button and feel that shit flying into my gauntlet and then like feeling powered up because of that. That's yeah, what and I then, want. And then unleashing your uh, Oni power to just absolutely slaughter everything on screen. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a great yeah, formula yeah. with just fantastic design of the demons of everything that's going on, like every Don't conceit Renaud. of Onimusha one through three. <laughs> I cheer for, like okay. yeah, no, that makes I would sense. be on board. I played you want the... a a samurai? Do you want the series to come back or do you want? Tell me I think about at this point. I think at this point we would take either one, but we're specifically no, talking about it. we're talking about spiritual successors. So um, uh, I'm I'm a man in the devers, desert that is just desperate for anything at this point, Brad. So I would love to see Onimusha come back. I would that would be fucking fantastic if you oh, could man. get a close spiritual successor that has the same kind of ideas of fixed camera angles, fighting against demons with melee weapons, and in feudal oh, Japan, fixed camera fuck angles, yes, huh? yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, you're, you're fixed camera wild, angles. Man. I mean, um, hmm. here's the thing: I don't think there's a lot. I, there's not a lot that I'm attached to about Onimusha that I think I, you know, specifically about like the about the the lore or the IP or whatever that I think is I need to carry over. I just need kind of the general vibe that Onimusha created, and kind of maybe some uh, just you know kind of the setting, the backdrop, and see, I'm I'm you know, against you there because go in a number of directions. Samanosuke is like in like the top ten of of heroes of video games I've ever played, like. Okay. He's he's a fucking badass samurai, and hey, he, Nick, have, he, he I mean, slaughters the shit out of demons. Have you ever played Neo, Chris Davis? As an Onimusha fan, who played a handful what is of Souls game, games, name even you should play um, Neo. Uh, 
or Neo I 2. I own Neo. I had a really bad experience playing the Neo first alpha demo that they did. That really the kind of burned me well, on it. You own the video game, so maybe you play the actual video game and not the first alpha demo. Yeah, but I don't want to no. play a Soulsian title. That's my thing. I don't want to play it a punishing big, experience. It has big Animusha energy, honestly. That's great, I think, I think but it's you're not going to find too much. Title. Like, I don't want that. You don't want to. You don't like Souls games. I mean, I do for the for the, for the sake of this co- of this topic. If for they Combat brought tonight, back Onimusha, it would be like an Souls amazing title, thing probably. if they turned it into a Souls game instead of a fucking four hour, five hour, you know, shallow Resident Evil game that's not even a survival horror game and is too easy. Fuck you. Play Neo. Sorry. Continue. No, <laughs> wait. No. Who's turn is it? <laughs> It's terrible. I'm with you, Chris. No, I'm I, with I, you, Chris. I, I just don't. I just don't like fucking put this, put this, put this, put this. Fucking play it. You want it? Fine, Brad. One day, you I will like quit this fucking I'll, website, and I will actually have time to do it. But like, I will volunteer. No. I will volunteer Chris Davis to play Neo if maybe, Brad maybe you return his copy yeah, I mean, of Demon I'm just Souls. Saying, if you like on emotion, you should play Neo. All right, if my I, turn. My turn, bitches. I'm gonna go. A little bit of left field here. Um, Manhunt. This website's keep. Sorry, this website's keeping you from playing Neo. Sorry, go ahead, Nick. That, that's a lie. That's he's almost done with Baldur's Gate comment. Three. It was a weird comment. He's, a he's almost done with Baldur's Gate Three. That's an absurd comment <laughs> yeah. for him to make. Okay, I just thought of it. Go ahead. Sorry, Nick. Uh, Manhunt. Manhunt. Oh, Manhunt. Me, I'm a sicko. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. The real reason I'm bringing this up probably right now is because I'm on a real hard like true crime kick right now <laughs> and i always thought the idea of manhunt was just really cool and also they did so many, so many really cool things with like uh like you know we always talk about the uh you wear the head you wear the headphones or whatever and if you if you talk like it picks up on and the the, the killers will like find you and stuff and i also kind of mm-hmm. realized that we that this day and age the closest thing we might have to manhunt is like out outlast which is not really the same thing, but it has kind of like manhunt energy because it's like you're running around these like dark places trying to hide from crazed killers and stuff. But like manhunt, really... you were you fucking murdered the people. I know. Doesn't even have combat. You just run away from things. I would honestly, if it, here's the thing, and the reason why I, I I picked this because honestly, I don't think I was very comfortable playing manhunt. I didn't play a lot of it. I just thought it was one of those things that had a re- lot of really cool ideas that made me kind of uncomfortable, but. We're talking about spiritual successors. You could kind of take that and flip it, flip it on its head, and uh, you know, instead of playing like the killers or whatever, you could play someone who's trying to survive in this like, basically trapped in like this maze, this like snuff mm-hmm. film, and you're trying to avoid Zero these killers or whatever. In chat, brought up a good point. What? I I I, f- I feel like all those games like Dead by Daylight are kind of they do have big manhunt energy. Yeah, they They're do. They does. they definitely do, but in a multiplayer setting. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's very, which, very true. That's a good point. Manhunt but... was kind of like a... Wasn't Manhunt like a Running Man type thing? Right? I get, I, I'm going to be Is honest. That I don't... <laughs> he doesn't know shit about, about the Running head. Man, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> like a... Like a, a that guy like a from Games? Family Feud. <laughs> Hunger Games, is that something you understand? Yes, that is something I understand, actually. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot there just conceptually you can play with, you could twist, you could you could come up with... I mean, obviously, I want it to be something very dark and fucked up and uh, uncomfortable um, because that's just the kind of person I am. I like that shit. <laughs> but, uh, you know... and But, like, I want to see what, what kind of, like, the natural evolution is of the... Uh, like the really cool ideas like i talked about with like the headset stuff or like wearing a headset and and trying to keep quiet and stuff well you know that would be really cool to see kind of like what the natural evolution of that is make it a fucking vr like a psvr2 game where it's like you're in this situation and you have to be very careful with what you say and and the actual way you move the environment i don't know that you can go any number of ways but i feel like you could make something that's very grounded very indie very dark and twisted i mean sure. also we live in like a we live i don't when did don't manhunt it. come out was it before or after don't say that what say don't it. say it don't say it. i'm sorry i caught myself remember i caught manhunt myself two on the wii you could use the yeah chucks to choke motherfuckers <laughs> yeah i do remember that um 
I don't know. I like Outlast popped into my head, and I was like, Outlast is kind of like getting. It's touching on the same kind of on on the manhunt energy, and I was like, I think it'd be really cool if somebody kind of took that idea and improved it and did something unique with it, flipped it on its head. I don't know. I don't know what that would look like exactly, but uh, all I know is I'm here for it, and I w- I would like to see someone try because the, the, there's so much ho- horror. I mean, I love the horror genre, obviously, but there's so it's so predictable right now. Like what kinds of games are like, hot, and you know, and even for me, it's like I love games like Visage and Madison and. Like, all that kind of shit is very me, but it's becoming very um, predictable. So I would love to see someone tackle kind of a different genre of horror and and see what they do with it. Do you remember that the normal difficulty in Manhunt was called Fetish? No. I mean, it was... No, I don't remember that. I mean, I've played... I've actually played very (laughs) little. Do you remember? Are you looking at a wiki? (laughs) I've, I've well, actually looked at you right now, like, when you said like, that. What is this? Actually, more disturbing yeah. than Manhunt. I mean, here's the thing. I've actually played very, very little Manhunt. It was more of just a. I really appreciated the idea, and I heard it was, you know, not amazing. But it's also been a very, very long time, and I think there's really cool ideas buried there. And you know, I think an indie develop the right indie developer could pick that up and run with it in a really cool way. Um, so number one, yeah. also I, Chris, number Chris, one after the break, so Chris, Chris Davis, the fetish thing. I don't think we should do that after the break. The the, because... the fetish thing is because that that game is you're you're in like a snuff film. So yeah, it's I know. Sex. Context, context. I, I okay. think I think we should just maybe uh, speed up a little bit and then take our break, right? Well, well, that's fine. I just don't want the other things I wanted to talk about to take very long. But whatever. Let's just let's just keep let's keep it rolling. Okay, my number one. Also a game I played in the PlayStation era. I think the reason why I gravitated towards that era is because all of these were kind of early 3D games. I mean, that generation, right, was Mm -hmm. early 3D. And I feel like indie devs aren't really like outside of like Resident Evil and maybe like a Mario, you know, like a more traditional 3D platformer. That's sort of like all you see indie devs dabbling with. It's mostly 2D stuff. But to me, such a formative 3D game um on the other end of the spectrum if one end of the spectrum is mario 64 right for me it was classic tomb raider and Mm. it's such a famous franchise and it it did it it was like really successful back then to me it's one of my favorites but like you would think that there were indie devs would love to like sort of recapture that magic but it, it has it has this connotation of like bad camera, bad controls, so it's not worth revisiting. But there's still something that is, I, f- I feel is very unique about classic Tomb Raider. And that's that, you know, platforming is like, you know, re- like dangerous, like it's like realistically like dangerous, right? Like you fall from, you know, you die when you fall from a height that would probably kill like a real person, right? And and you really have to, you know, the environments are dangerous and, you know, it's kind of the Indiana Jones setting. So there's like lots of traps and stuff. And I don't know, like I've never seen, I, I don't know why we don't see more indie devs trying to like do that to like, I'm going to make a classic Tomb Raider game because classic Tomb Raider games were cool and people love them. Maybe modern modernize them a little bit, but you can't modernize them the way that like its own series has or like the evolution of classic tomb raider turned into you know clamoring on ledges and you can't even fall off there's like no stakes right tomb raider was all about stakes you know platforming combat like the world the environment was dangerous enemies were dangerous and there was like a precision to everything you were doing and like figuring out where to go and then figuring out how to get there safely without eating shit was like the game right and modern platformers aren't like that modern action adventure games are not like that there's really nothing like that anymore they were these were very challenging atmospheric scary games at time and honestly there's not a lot like it anymore like the 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 most the analog that i think of when i think of you know, big Tomb Raider energy in a modern game, I actually gravitate towards Souls games because those are the games where, you know, getting around like 
kind of precarious like world geometry knowing that you can like fall off and die at any moment and kind of holding your breath that sort of stuff that exists in the souls games right in, in a way that kind of, it doesn't exist anywhere else in the industry i miss that stuff and i really wish indie devs would you know dabble in and that's or, or no, i just absolutely. want a kickstarter of this is classic tomb raider and all but name you know it needs to be a yeah name, you know? I don't and also like raider. I I, I kind of want to see. Yeah, I I agree with that. Also, it'd be kind of cool because you know so many indie games tend to uh, they find these like really cool um, like visual styles that wouldn't necessarily fly in AAA game development. And like it'd be cool to see like a Tomb Raider homage that kind of like captures that like classic PS One visual style You're a little bit more of that. The low poly kind of like aesthetic, yeah. right? Which yeah. is almost obvious, right? You you almost need to have that. You, you, triangle boobs and everything right but i just i really want someone who kind of understands like what was amazing about those games because you know history kind of forgets and it's just sort of this thing of back camera back controls and it was all about laura croft right the big titties the ads right but there was something kind of special there that got lost even in its own series and you know i know there's people out there who know what was great about that i see those threads pop up on like era every now and then where everyone starts talking about how classic tomb raider still holds up you just have to understand it and that sort of thing and maybe we're all a little crazy but but uh you know i'm sure somebody in those threads is going to make a game one day and i just hope it's good so i'm with you, you. know brett that was, you, that you was make also a couple of shortlist. good points there <laughs> i see what you did there like the mm, okay no boobies Damn all right me. part of the problem. crispy <laughs> crispy uh this answer is not really in line with the prompt but i don't care yeah, there's, gonna, there's really there's I'm really gonna no give it anyway for for strength gonna, so. yeah that'd be funny if he said, <laughs> wait that'd be funny if he said my number one is a spiritual successor to destiny 2 that would be sick <laughs> <laughs> but a spiritual successor to destiny 1 might be better um, I want a spiritual successor slash. I okay, so we're just talking about like an indie dev making a spiritual successor to a game, right? Yes, yes. I want to see that done for Quadrilateral Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> and really, what I'm asking for is I just want Brendan Chung to make a sequel to Quadrilateral Cowboy. Yeah, well, he's uh, what he's been working on, he's been working on that. Right? He's been working on Skin Deep for like no, it's called Skin Deep forever, and like there's yeah. no end. I haven't even heard from him. Like like I yeah. I used to see updates on Twitter all the time, but it's been yeah. years now. You just inceptioned this. Twitter. This is a spiritual yeah. successor to an. This is an indie spiritual successor to an indie game. I just want to make a sequel or like a more like no, a, like fine. a bigger expanded experience because like Quadrilateral Cowboy was so fucking you want cool. cool hacking and, the game and yeah and and I want I want blendo games slash brendan chung to do it because his like his games are fucking cool like he's got this really like filmic hey eye if, that that if i team think really... to lose anything it's that a studio can make a spiritual successor to its own game sure. that's sure that's allowed that's allowed sure but yeah this is really what i want is just is just blendo games to put out something please <laughs> please just please do it <laughs> Uh, cool. I, I wherever you are, Brendan, I hope you're okay. Hope you're doing well. He was he was tweeting just... the day about the Quake Two remaster, so he is alive. There you go. He's out, he's out there t talking about Quake Two. He's good. Okay. Go. Um, no, it's a good choice. It would be it would be cool to see. Like the, the hacking stuff in Quadrilateral Cowboy was fucking awesome, and I would love yeah, to see that. Just, just like, recontextualize well, a little game. bit, like make it like make like just I don't know. Everything about the man can, 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 can make a scene. He can put objects yes. in, a, in a world and. Ah uh, man, he can he can <laughs> compose something that is make, like this beautiful the, blend of video game and cinema. Like mm. make the the man in the chair the video game. Yeah, well, shit, man, that <laughs> would be that's kind of different, but that would be really cool. <laughs> All right, um, cool. One of my ideas flew tonight. Okay, uh, <laughs> Nolan. All right, uh, my final game and crispy. Uh, this is. It's for you and me. Uh, oh, I know what you're going to say, too. I know what you're going to say, too. And I should have said it. Fuck. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what I want this game to be. 
is the thing, but I, I want it to be something. People keep and so trying, I spent, and they keep yeah. fucking falling flat. So, oh my, um, is killing me. Are we talking about the same game? Maybe. Um, I don't know what city I want it to be in. Are we still talking about the same game? <laughs> Probably not. I don't, nice. don't know. Chris, Chris <laughs> is squinting, so now we're not. Um, so now we need two answers. What Crispy was thinking of and what no one's talking about. Yeah, I am curious what Crispy was thinking of. Um, I don't know. Because I, I, I think the, the, the core concept behind what, you know, one of the things that made the game fun was the kind of the city it was in and the, the characters that made up the, the group. Um, and I was trying to think, oh, okay, well, if I, hey, if I put it over here, if I put it over here, would it make sense? Um, I'm not sure. I and have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> Crispy killing. knows. He's going to tell Spence, us right he's now. Killing what me. Was thinking of. <laughs> I want to, I want to hear it. Chris, I want to hear it from Crispy. Assassin's Creed multiplayer. So no, yes and no. So that was, that was originally one of the ones on my short list, but this particular one I'm talking about is Gotham City Imposters. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I, I, so I spent some time thinking about it, and I was like, okay, well, what if we had it in like the Marvel Universe? Uh, and like the problem is, one of the things that make Gotham City Imposters so good is the fact that it's in Gotham. So it's like a yeah. shitty city, and like it's the Joker's minions, and it's like a bunch of guys what? dressed up as Batman trying to take down Joker's minions. And I'm like, could you, you couldn't really do that in like Wakanda. Uh, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Or could you? Or could you? But like, I mean, maybe uh, someone smarter than me could come up with something. Uh, um, that's interesting that you say that because I, I do think a spiritual successor to Gotham City Imposters would be cool. Like it was a fun game in its own right. But there was a lot of things I was th I was trying to think through titles that's like, what well, would be a really cool spiritual successor? And half of them is like, well, that doesn't work because what was cool about it was kind of the license, you know, was the yeah, for sure, for was, sure, like. Like and what's so cool about Gotham City Imposters is that it's just so like unlike anything else Batman that was like really popular at the time. What if know? instead of being linked to an IP, because that would make it far less likely to be like an indie game, right? So like it's but instead of being like linked to an IP like Batman, it was more linked to like kind of an not an Arab or more like a genre. I'm thinking of like like a noir detective like New York City streets or so. I don't know who you would be playing as or or, or like who what like like the, the, the idea of... of like a goofy fun arena shooter though like mm -hmm. right. is is kind that, of that's one of the things that, that that's one of the reasons it worked it was like it you know the who want to be superheroes or something running around like you know what with I mean? guns like, <laughs> with, yeah, with guns well with so, yeah guns, so the thing cards. the thing that made it fun for those who aren't aware is yeah so you're the joker side uh, you know uh, is you know they're using kind of wacky joker things like, you know like oh like big hammers or launch pads like very comical stuff. And then the Batman side is using like, oh, you know, like grappling hooks and like, you know, kind of yeah. Batman style tools, but clearly like schlubs uh, uh. vigilantes who like kind of just hobble together some tool. And so that's kind of where the fun is, is that because it, it just it fits so well in that universe. Yeah. Um, like the, the Batman side, you play as the guys wearing hockey pads. Yeah. Exactly. No, and that, that's <laughs> definitely what it is. Um but uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say uh, Assassin's Creed multiplayer is definitely on my short list uh, uh, for things yeah. to come. I think back. Those are both terrific I answers because it would be cool either way, you know. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I would love another yeah, IO Interactive never made a Hitman version of Dude, that. Dude, I, so I, I, I agree. Yeah. It is dumb that they didn't do that because once again, that would transition oh, perfectly. Uh, to, you know, the, the latest Hitman game, having a multiplayer where you're like in disguises and it's just like they 48 people. Map. It's just it's, one of those yeah. big, like, yeah, complicated Hitman maps with like six people or eight people mm -hmm. in it. Like, oh, it's so cool. That would yeah. be I don't even like Hitman that much because of obvious because of things we talked about plenty of times. But like, I have to admit that would be fucking awesome. It's <laughs> the perfect idea. It's the perfect yeah. franchise to do that. Yeah. But like the cool thing about your idea, Nolan, is that I feel like. Even if you, because if you were restricted because you couldn't do Batman or whatever, I think there's enough there to oh, like, sure. if you if you put your mind to it, you could come up with some really cool so, fucking well, ideas. One of the things I was thinking of is more recent one that's similar, but not quite there is Friends versus Friends. Mm, uh, yeah. It is, you know, an arena shooter. It's a smaller group of people, though. It's 2v2 or 1v1, not like, I can't remember how many was in Gotham City Imposters. It was at least six, if not eight per team. So it, it was, was a lot pretty, larger yeah. group. 
Yeah, they were, yeah, they were pretty big like groups. That. Yeah, um, but friends versus friends is similar in the sense that you're using kind of more wacky mechanics, like you're setting up turrets or um, using like you know like bombs or Molotov cocktails or freezing your, or making yourself huge. So it's a similar concept, but it just doesn't have the same vibe. It's not as fast paced. That's one of the things that was fun about Gotham City Imposters is it was super fast paced right. uh, when you were using like the zip lines or like the trampoline pads. You were like it was very vertical, going all around really quick. Um, and so, yeah, th- th- there hasn't really have, been a whole lot like it. Or you could have Absolutely. like like the roller skates with like a grappling hook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh, or like the glider, you could glide. Uh, dude, that game was so good. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much there. All right. Uh, Chris Davis, what's your, your final pick for the evening? Okay, here's my dilemma. Do I choose the game yes. that's for me that I want more than anything else in the world? Or do I choose the one that is for the betterment of society? That will make every one of us better human beings. Video well, games. The thing. The, video here's games the rub. You can only pick one. Society. Is one of them Twisted Metal? No. Neither of them are Twisted Metal. Well, okay, here's the, here's the rub, Chris Davis, because there's got to be stakes to this, right? Whichever one you pick right now, you can't tell us what the other one was. Yeah, I like it. Gotta be, gotta be stakes. You just got to pick one. It's oh, got to okay. be painful. Okay, I'm going to choose gotta the one sick. that is for the betterment of society. Uh, good man also because the other one may actually have a spiritual successor so well anyway which remember you can't tell us what that is if you I say it, what it is I'm, not, i will not tell you i want to okay. know although i've talked you can about t- the after before. the pocket on this recording no one will know okay all right go ahead what's 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 your choice my choice is freedom fighters freedom, freedom fighters, fighters was it's it's probably one of io's greatest games they ever made it was it was them experimenting from a time of having done Hitman and seeing what else they can do. And they created this very fun game about resisting an occupying force uh, with fun AI that it became really fun to infiltrate enemy territory, to order guys around to just go do simple tasks, uh, it which was it was basically point and clicky squad and stuff base. done. Yeah, it was full squad super based. accessible squad based action. Yeah, it, and that was just what you era was this? Was PS2 tactics. era, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was PS2 era. That's impressive. You didn't oh, see? Oh, you never played it? No, dude. This game, is, this would be a good revival. It's, I can it, picture the box. It is it's fucking like... <laughs> rad, man. I'm telling you, it's it is such a good game. Oh man, the, but the, yeah, the squad tactics themselves, like there were games that had done them before but not in such a user-friendly way. Like, yeah. a handful of, like, uh, super military tactical games, yeah, sure, they, they'd done it, but not to where, in a PS2 game, I could aim the cursor at a corner and press a button, and they all both automatically went towards the target, but also attacked all the enemies along the way, so you didn't have to micromanage or anything like that. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah, it was... Man, I was pretty, I was pretty yeah, talented, cool. huh? Io was is a very talented. I mean, developer. you don't think so, obviously. I, mean, I, I think they suck. I'm scared. I don't know if it, How fucking I recognize it. I recognize that they're very talented. Oh, I just yeah, you can play a little should, Kane and Lynch, maybe a little I just mini don't ninjas. Know if should be excited about 007 or not? I'm Look, we should out. be excited for 007 because Io Interactive had a killer formula, pun unintended but delivered, with Hitman. But like, I hope it's exactly like Hitman, so that I won't like it. You love it. You're like, oh, this is amazing. The fantasy is exactly what I wanted. But Freedom Fighters, exact same as Hitman. (laughs) Freedom Fighters is them trying something different and nailing on the fucking head. It was perfect. It deserved a sequel, and we the music was so epic. Music was fucking (laughs) great. Yes, there was not a bad part of this game. Uh, Remember though, remember we are talking about this. I agree with your. This is a great choice. But what we're talking about here is having, theoretically speaking, an indie developer picking up and running with the the basic. Well, I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you, but IO Interactive is now indie, and um, they did make a spiritual successor called Freedom Fighters. To Freedom Fighters, and it was called Kane and Lynch, and it sucked. Uh, Yeah. Wait, would you call Kane and Lynch a spiritual successor to Freedom Fighters? Kane and Lynch was a spiritual successor to. It was a bad one, but it was this. Kane and Lynch started in a room where they were like, what should we do? What should the next freedom fighters be? Like, absolutely. 
It's got okay. Freedom Fighters DNA all over it. It just went in a really bad direction. And then Cable Lynch 2 is a completely different game. It lost all the DNA. No, they, they had a they had a project statement, let's make a spiritual successor to Freedom Fighters, and then everything beyond that was not that. So like there is they some the DNA part. there, but it's like it's yeah. like So what you're saying is you would like someone or IO to pick up and try pick up that thread and try again with something different, but like with Freedom Fighters in mind. Yes, Which a game fair. where you're you're fighting an occupying force in a city that you're slowly taking back that has fun squad mechanics, a fun story to experience. Uh, I mean, you could make it open world if you wanted, like you really don't need to. Are they think. are they North Koreans in your uh, vision or does well, that not matter? I, I don't care who the occupying force is as long as there's an occupying force. If they're bad there guys, are so many let's jokes kill the bad guys. Right now about who the occupying force is, that I, it, uh, but it'd all be too sad and depressing to talk about. Good choice, Chris Davis. Good choice. Also, that game um, had pretty decent multiplayer, by the way. Oh, it did because you had you had the squad stuff in multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Sounds like a Jimmy. Um. All right. My final pick for the night, I'm going to go with um, I'm going to go with Okami because we only I mean, I know we technically got a sequel to Okami on the DS or whatever, but like and I I, I want to see a spiritual successor to Okami with kind of the same reverence for like artistic visual style like doing something really creative visually maybe pick it like maybe shift and pick like a different culture and then like kind of like do an homage to like prominent artistic stylings there and turn it into a game. But also I want it to be mo- more of an emphasis on platforming and less of an emphasis on combat. Um, I love Okami and I love the combat in Okami, but it beca- eventually <coughs> became this, this thing where it was just like, I was doing combat so much. I, I was, I was spending less time doing the things that I really loved about Okami, which was running around that world, using the paintbrush and doing all kinds of like solving puzzles and stuff. I wanted to be more focused on that kind of stuff. It's funny um, you say that because I feel like after Platinum, which was Clover, after they were dissolved from from Capcom, I feel like Platinum Games did go on, like especially Kamiya, to kind of make spiritual successors to that stuff. Like Bayonetta was a spiritual successor to Devil May Cry, and I feel like you see a lot of Beautiful Joe and the Wonderful One Hundred and One, but there's no, there's they've never like revisited the Okami vision at Platinum, and right. man. They're the ones who could be do cool. it, but I would love to see what that looks like exist. today. It would be, it'd yeah. be so, it'd be crazy. I feel like it's only a matter of time before we eventually get something that kind of like harkens to Okami, whether it's from Platinum or from some indie dev. <laughs> I feel like it's just a matter of time. But man, like if like Tunic was such an amazing homage to classic Zelda and it did some really cool things with like its visual style, like I want to see that kind of treatment, but more focused on like a platform, like a platformer. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't have much else to say about it other than I miss. I loved Okami. I loved replaying Okami for the Revival Club. I love that game. It would be so cool to see somebody kind of pick up that thread and make something new with that game in mind. Hmm. Um, here, here. Well, and f- directly from the Kinitsugami Path of the Goddess website, quote, oh, no. this labor of love follows in the tradition of truly unique tiles such as Okami. OK, but and. And is that the end of the sentence? Uh, also, <laughs> Shinsekai into the depths. I do not know that name. Huh. Uh, I mean, I'll believe it when I see it. I'm not one. saying I'm not excited for that yeah, game, but cool. I definitely need to see more. All right. So that's it. That's our top three games uh, that we would love to see spiritual successors to. Um, of course, uh, you know, we're, we're still trying to do these top threes periodically. I'm not sure when the next one will be, but if you have ideas, Ooh, the, that you'd the like next to sh- one are AAA big budget uh, uh, copycats of unique indie games, so kind of like the other way around. You know, like uh, I want Diablo to make a Vampire Survivors. Come on, come on, Blizzard. Well, there, there we go. Give the um, people what they want. If you have an idea for a, for a top three, let us know. Let us know in the comments at fourplayernetwork.com. You can reach us on Twitter. You can find us in our Discord at discord.gg slash fourplayer. Let us know your thoughts, and maybe we'll pick it and we'll do it next time. But before we close out tonight. Um, I do want to, of course, do a little fantasy critic update because uh, some things have happened. And this is going to kind of t- link directly to Gamescom, which happened this week. We talked a little bit about it last week, um, but Gamescom was being pitched very specifically this year as being kind of like 
it's just going to be revisiting a lot of stuff that we already know about, but we're going to get updates on stuff. And that is largely what it was. It was as advertised, so there's not a lot of new announcements here. I'm not going to run down all the stuff they talked about because there was a bunch of stuff. Um, but there were some stuff worth mentioning here, and it is some of this stuff is directly linked to our fantasy critic because there were a lot of delays this week. Some long-awaited delays, I might yes. add. Yes. Um, speci- yeah. So um, let's start with delays real quick. Uh, also, reminder, if you haven't yet, if there's stuff on your list that's been delayed, you can request the drop at any time, and it'll happen on Saturday. So just for your information, Chris Davis, you thought I had to approve them. I don't. You just have to request it, and then it'll happen automatically on Saturday when did. the bids go through. Um, so delays replaced which is one of which is one of the games that i that i drafted initially has finally been delayed to 2024 i've been kind of waiting on an update on that that's that like really that slick that looking one. yeah i think so because you know i i don't really know it looks really cool but it also could be kind of shallow i don't know we'll see no i mean it could be an, dev has been like silent yeah yeah you know they have been i mean i figured they were probably going to give it an update at some point but it's really nice to finally hear it not disappointed i'm just glad they finally said something about it um Tekken 8, which is on Chris Davis's roster, was given a date in January, so you can drop that one. Missed it by uh, that much. Yep, yep, yep. Um, not on anybody's list, but worth mentioning, I guess, that game Night- Nightingale, Nightingale that we saw mm-hmm. from Xbox a couple of years ago um, is February 22, 2024, but it's going coming out in early access, so that's interesting. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which was on my short list of games that I was kind of keeping an eye on for maybe bidding on before the end of the year, mm. uh, was pushed, or at least given a date, given an official date now of February 1st, 2024. If I look at my release schedule now, I, I try to like, if I, if it gets, something gets a date, I kind of move it up so you can kind of see everything that's confirmed. There's only two games as that on my list anyways that have actual dates, and it's that game and Prince of Persia. Um... Let's see. Uh, oh, and uh, Jusant, which is on my list, Jusant. coming out October October thirty first. Um, so that's that's good. To, to, I mean, I wasn't really worried about that one uh, slipping or anything because they've been saying fall twenty twenty three for a while. And there's already a playable demo of it, so it seemed pretty pretty obvious. But it's coming out on Halloween. Um, and Stalker two, which is also on my list, finally got confirmation that it is being pushed to quarter one 2024 which i think we all saw coming um given you know obviously what they're dealing with because they're they're based in ukraine um but they had said it was december for the longest time so and it's playable at gamescom there's pe- there's video of people out there playing the game now um so it's finally ni- it's nice to the impressions i mean i haven't seen a lot of impressions yet um i haven't been paying super close attention today so mm-hmm. i'm not really sure if i missed something but it's fi- It's nice to see that they finally said, okay, it's coming out quarter one, 2024. So that's going to be dropped on my list as well. Um, and the only other thing on here that I wanted to mention, or a couple things, uh, they announced the only like real like surprise announcement, I think, at least that I think was worth mentioning maybe, is Little Nightmares 3 got announced, mm-hmm. which I didn't see coming at all, and it's super massive games. This is the first game in the series being developed by a different studio. So really that's yeah. The first game was de- first two games were developed by Tarsier or Tarsier. I think is how you pronounce it. Um, this is super massive games coming in 2024 and it looks like it's going to be a either single player or co-op game. Um, but it has a very different look. I mean, it has a similar I wonder visual if because style. The original but, dev is making some. Yeah. Like prob- little big prob- nightmares. <laughs> but but we're making it- something. I mean, it seems like, I mean, this feels pretty quick after Little Nightmares 2. So, like, maybe Which, they started production in it's simultaneously. Been a couple of years. I mean, yeah. it's been a little while. Little Nightmares mm, 2 is... Like a year, I think, I lived, right? I lived in this house when I played Little Nightmares 2, so it couldn't have been that long ago. Lit. But then again, time you has no meaning to me anymore. When you moved into the house, homie? I know, and I just know that wasn't very long ago. <laughs> Little Nightmares 2 was 2020. In terms of game development. In terms of game development it was like, time, it was like January of 2021. That's two and a half years. I mean, yeah, that's a long time ago. Maybe Calendar for a game math is the hardest math. Shut up. All right. And then lastly, we got a first look at, or not first look, but the first look in a long time at Black Myth Wukong, which uh, is that, that Souls S game uh, 
based in correct me if I'm wrong, it's Chinese mythology, right? Journey to and the West, the novel. Journey to the West, yeah. yeah. It's definitely, you're like a monk. You're like a but, monkey guy. I think you're a shape shifting character. I think you can take the form of different animals, but the one we always see is like a, you're like a monkey uh, looking character. Monkey king. Uh, yeah, but uh, it looks fucking cool. This is also one of those games that, like Brad, as you mentioned before the show, it's kind of like, is it a real video game? <laughs> Like, I don't like, I don't know. Um, but we're finally getting looks at it and it looks like, you know, maybe it's, it's closer and closer. It, I was getting you remember that one from E3, the Sony press conference. Was it Sony with, with that was like, no, was no, like, I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember what it's called. Cause that's kind of a weird name, but you know, that is a game that we just found out about a couple months ago. Wukong we've known about for like three years and it's, yeah. it kind of has that uh, like atomic heart vibe where it's like for a long time, it's kind of like, is that no, I don't really believe it until we finally yeah. finally get our hands on it. So uh, it's nice to see that it's it's coming along because I do think it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of it for Gamescom stuff. I, th- I th- pretty I, weak, so, Keely. I mean, well, he, tried, uh, he tried to set expectations, uh, right? Go ahead, crispy. What? Yeah. No, I'll save it for my four-player minute. I mean, actually. Okay. Okay. How, yeah. I mean, how can he call it a week show when he murdered a kid live on stage? Live on stage, you know, like he murdered a kid live on stage. Oh, no, he, he right as the show started, another one of these like kids trying to find YouTube clout like stormed the stage and had oh, to get dude, carried that off. Was, that was like a man with a full beard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was not a kid. Yeah, that was... yeah. Sorry, I apologize. I didn't know we were going to get all defensive about like whether it was an adult male or you know or or, or a kid. I don't know. Um, but that happened, and whatever. It's a it problem it now that it's happened twice. He was so pissed. Yeah, he was like, "This is so he pretty." This he handed it pretty well, to be honest. Like, he, he, well, he's, he's a showman. He, he? he knows how to put it. You know, no, it's yeah, not about the way he handled it. it. It's it's about it's about um, it's becoming uh, a the thing, precedent, which is yeah. a problem yeah. because, like, you know, Al Pacino was on a stage once. Maybe Al Pacino doesn't show up when. You know, every time he does an event, like a crazy person rushes the stage. Rushes the stage. Right? Yeah, yeah, maybe it's yeah. time to stop making the stage immediately accessible. Like, you shouldn't be able to just stand up from your chair and walk ten feet and be on the stage. Like, maybe it needs to be cordoned off, and you have like, to go up a little like, like every theater in the world. Yeah, like every other place in the fucking. No, world. I mean like um, like the stage is open to a theater. Like that's what a theater is. I guess. I guess that's. Or True, he could but... just go ahead and place like three or four snipers in the rafters for every event he does. So that was blow rough. darts. Um, he's saying they should murder these people. No, he's talking about tranquilizer darts. That's what he's saying. All yes, right. Tranquilizer darts and nothing else. Fantasy critic. I don't know. I, that covers all the delays. Um, as of last week, Carlos picked up risk of rain returns. So we, we, we guessed that oh, correctly right. as to who, who got that. Um, and uh what am I, oh yeah blasphemous blasphemous 2 came out 84 84 is, you know it's pretty good right and then uh armored core 6 we've been talking about it crispy how are you feeling it's sitting at like an 85 right now 85 86 feeling pretty good it's hard to be mad at it you know like it's it's no 90 so you know, right. whatever, but Luckily, like, there will be, but you guys like there, there, the, the discourse around this got to some really weird lows where people were throwing it in the like seventies and shit like that. Chris Davis out here saying 72, which is absolute horseshit. And, uh, the nice, I mean, kind of the nice consolation prize there is that this takes a 15 point chunk out of Chris Davis is already First, that already was fucking around. That was already me flagging that score. This is this this Armored Core Six has put him in the fucking ground. Thank you for yeah. playing, Chris. We'll see you That's next possible. year. Okay. I, I just, that, that, that might be true. Let's I just hope not that get that that Chris Davis is going to turn around and do the exact same thing to you with Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I just That's I just I hope just Mortal even Kombat if, gets just even if my my bench is a lot stronger than his bench yeah. anyway. Like like a Mortal Kombat one isn't going to hurt me nearly as much as an Armored Core Six is hurting him. Uh, so if if it so gets eighty six, that's I'm satisfied. So is yeah, anybody going to play Armored Core Six before but next? Week? Like I'm averaging ten to fifteen points per game. You're averaging like five points per game. Like. 
Damn, this is getting savage. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I'm over here. I still have like 32 points, maybe if if, if even that. So you know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, you but need to you're start spending yeah. money, man. Me? Yes. Okay. Well, you have so many open slots now. I I mean now I do, but as of a couple days ago, I only had two. So I was well, waiting until things. Well, okay. Well, give us some time. Maybe I'll spend some you fucking money. You only need money. four bucks. You only need four bucks. Yeah. Hey, Nick, what you really should do is take advice from Chris Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Bid on Damn. absolutely unknowables and be surprised by what happens. <laughs> Chris absolutely. Davis, I refuse to trade Sea of Stars for Mr. the already released Baldur's Gate. Mr. Armored Core 6 is a 72, everybody. I don't even care if it was a joke. That's absurd. <laughs> Wait, wait. So, so Chris Davis again. You won't trade me Sea of Stars for Baldur's Gate. I know I'm already going to lose, Brad. So no. Okay, but you you made it sound like it was because you love Sea of Stars too much. That's a good part of it, yes. But I was already going to lose, so I had no chance in this entire league. The minute I announced that one, you you would if you had Baldur's Gate. But okay, (laughs) let's. All right, I got I got Lego Two K drived. That's what fucked me. It was it wasn't fucking armor core. It was Lego 2K drive. OK, no, I had hope truth. because it looked really good. I don't think and, it was a bad pickup. I, I don't. At the time, I didn't think it would have done that for me. You all right. On it, though. Yeah, I kind of did. I'd spent there's two bit. There's two new bids this week. Two new bids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's uh, Sonic <laughs> Superstars. <laughs> And Steam World Build have a bid this week. So we shall see how those play out and we'll talk about it next time. Um Crispy sound like I wasn't really planning on doing a four player minute, but you have one. Oh, I I just thought we were going to. I don't know. Fine, fuck it. Normally do it. Go. Just a regular threes. podcast, not damn it. <laughs> I don't fucking know how we do this show. It's only been <laughs> it's only been eleven years. No, hit us, Chris. Hit us, Crispy. What, what? Uh, I was going to talk about Space Marine 2. Ooh. Because people are playing Ooh. the demo at Gamescom, and the buzz is kind of positive. It's, I mean, it's like, yeah. hey, this is actually kind of fucking sick. Do you uh, think it's actually going to release? Have they been I don't know. Anything? They haven't reconfirmed anything, and that Australian guy who, you know, that one, what, skill up or whatever... In his video, he kind of offhandedly said, like, oh, when it comes out next year. And it's like, do you know something? Or are we all just assuming it's coming out next year? Like, I mean, it's the end of August. Like, if you're going to announce a date, like, let's uh, let's get to it. Right. Let's let's get there. Let's get a word out, because if that comes out this year, I think I think I think it could be pretty cool. I think it could be pretty helpful for my list. It's um, been it's it's been getting some some. I mean, good fantasy critic, yeah, fantasy critic aside, like the game actually does look kind of sick. Like it looks fun, it looks it looks kind of cool. Like it's got like, I I would imagine it's got that kind of vibe that like, it it's got like what's fun about like a Mosu game almost, where it's just like a powerful character running through like endless waves of enemies and just mowing them down, but like with maybe a little more, I don't know polish and presentation to it mm-hmm. uh the, I mean, the first out. one first i mean these are cool. yeah this is this is i don't remember the name of the studio but they're the ones that do the world war z with like all the fucking it's saber interactive or is saber. that that's the name of the it's saber yeah, yeah, yeah saber saber interactive yeah. that's what it was with all the like the waves of zombies that would like pile up on each other they're doing that again but with tyranids in the 40k universe which is just and you're like on these huge like realistic battlefields with like tanks and bombers and just like infantry running around and you're just a fucking space marine just like getting in there like sick it, can't wait getting in the shit it's gonna be yeah. fun i hope it lands i hope it lands this year but we'll see what happens what silicon brad era. silicon era released a Baldur's gate review and it's the lowest i've seen yet they gave it a seven out of ten <laughs> wow. oh man i don't think it's ever getting going back up to 97 why just I don't, because I mean, of bugs? I read it because the uh, clout maybe I don't know. Yeah. But before that, the lowest score they, was an eight. Are they stupid dum dums with I pudding so. for brains? 
I saw Crispy in well, Discord this week. Green that might miss some marks, but he has a great start to what could be a strong revival for what. Yeah, great yeah. start. Yeah. It's what? a great start. Oh, oh my the best god! Best wow. ever made. And no fuck, a great start. I saw maybe Crispy. They, in maybe they got Discord to act this freak. week. What? I saw Crispy in our very own Discord this week state that Baldur's Gate Three is his favorite video game. Oh, we were talking about. Uh, revival clubs based on everyone's favorite video games, and I was like, I, I don't, yeah, it's just Baldur's Gate. You're already doing it. We're already in my revival club. Yeah, <laughs> consider it revived. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any final thoughts they would like to share? Yeah, evening? here's my final thought. Given how fussy people were about playing Vagrant Story, I would love to see how fussy they get going back to play like the original Baldur's Gate. Ooh, Dude, oh, man, like it would that's be a disaster. There's no I going mean, back. There's like I. Uh, from both angles, from like a game design angle and from just like it's fucking D and D second edition angle. Like that's tough. Advanced, that's... you know, two point five. Oh yeah, advanced. That was the easier version. <laughs> that was that was the one that was easier to understand. You're right. <laughs> I don't know. I like like the, the like like talking to people in Baldur's Gate three about like calculating uh, like hit per, like hit percent chance and, and damage and stuff makes me think that like trying to wrap like uh, even me trying to wrap my head around how older editions well, of D and D work is just like the implementation was a lot simpler. Back then. Sure. Sort of yeah. Sure. Real time with pause. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't have any final thoughts. Um, you know, I, I here's my final thought. I finally finished Blasphemous. Um, nice. That's a good ending. I didn't pretty mid. Um, well, don't, you know, I do think it started. might be a little overrated within our community. I think it is very, very good, and I'm very happy happy to play the sequel. Um, I mean, it's some fucking Hollow Knight though, like you mm. know, certain somebody says, but it it is really good. I don't mm. think it's, you know, if I were to like tear Metroidvanias, uh it's good. It's very good. It's very good. I think it's overrated a little bit in our community, but it is very, very. That's fair. Very good. That's very fair. Good. The stuff um, that, that that works on you know Nick, like oh, all the gore, you know, it just uh, it doesn't work on me as much. That's all. But underneath is a really, that's really fine. good game. Solid. solid. I'm, I'm I'm super excited to play Blasphemous too because I can't wait to see all the fucked up shit. I just can't wait for it. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to <laughs> see works. the new platforming mechanics. Yeah, really that's, that's cool too. I'm just really ready for the fucked up shit. Um, <laughs> any, any other final thoughts? Any other final thoughts? That's Chris it. Davis, I'm anything from you? I'll, the only thing I have is that I am purposefully taking off tomorrow from work so I can actually finish Baldur's Gate 3. Because god you damn, wild child. I need, Do they I know need that? this game out of my life because yeah. I need to play Armor Core. Dude, I'm at 90 hours and I'm I'm like in the outskirts of the city. Like, bro, I am worse. I, I am worse. Hate than that. it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm still uh, I'm still an hour like 22 or 23, and I haven't even met Car. What's her name? Karnaka? Is that Carlac? Oh, Carla. Oh my god! Are you remember Karnaka? Okay. You know I get it. I get You're it. Fine. Nick is racist against nope. tieflings. Nope. That's he really. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you earlier, like a week ago, about this what? kid? What, yeah, Brad? Twenty-two mm-hmm. hours. Throw it on the no, fire no, you with don't Diablo Four. Numbers. That's what I'm saying. My fuck you of the week goes to Brad Simons because <laughs> I, I, the only reason I haven't played I'm more right, right. Baldur's Gate is because I am trying my goddamnedest to finish Tears of the Kingdom. I just got the Master Sword last night. The ending is in sight because all I want to do is get back to playing Baldur's Gate Three, but I just don't feel like I can function. While I'm playing two massive fucking games at the same time, you're gonna go d- right from Tears of the Kingdom to Blasphemous to Starfield. Baldur's Gate's gonna get further, no, and further and further away. You are full of shit, Brad. My fuck you goes to you. Are, are you? You're still full of shit. The... This is there is no world in which Baldur's Gate Three is not the front runner for my game of the year. So sh- hmm. <laughs> shut up. Are you? Are shut you up. still in the the crash site area? Uh. Around, yeah, I'm actually doing. I'm actually finally doing the. Uh, where like you, you go haven't in... moved to a new map yet, have you? No, 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 no. I have not. Okay. I have not. What did you uh, get to the Underdark? No, I went to the Underdark like ten hours in and was like, nope, fuck this place, and I left. Oh uh, yeah, okay. there's a couple places you can kind of like, yeah. 
So I ha- I have been to the Underdark. I didn't spend a lot of time in the Underdark yet. Um, it's pretty, cool. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But I did escape. I did trigger the entire goblin camp to try and kill me. Um, and I escaped through the Underdark. I went back through the Underdark, <laughs> and I and I found one of the uh, teleport the the fast travel things and went back to uh, what you call it. You so, realize anyways. you don't need to go to a tra- one of those points to actually move, right? Oh no, Gina. Oh, Nicholas. You, you just open your map and from select map. one. Yeah, you just select it. Yeah. You, okay, you, whatever. I I I was role playing. Well, he's bitch. I didn't to do that. Click, click on the right stick on the map play. and it throws up a list of all your fast travel points. Is Crispy Nicholas laughing at me for role playing? Role playing. Yeah, it, I mean it's kind of funny because even in a role play, you don't have to be at one teleportation circle to go to another teleportation circle. Okay. You well, just cast teleport. And if you, you know, know the me. sigils for, wait, for you know the... me, I don't like fast traveling. So, so, I... so you're role playing oh, Nick no. from four player podcast. Oh, yes. That's why no. your character's not yes. fast traveling. Exactly. It's called uh, conviction, Bradley. Hey, man. You know? <laughs> if, if, if we if we used all our weird, stupid convictions for positive things, this world would be a better place. You know? <laughs> all right. With that, with that said, uh, that's going to be our show tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, fourplayernetwork.com is, of course, the website where you can find all of our podcasts. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Twitch. But more importantly, you can find us in Discord at discord.gg slash fourplayer. Come hang out. We'd love to talk to you, talk about video games, uh, talk about fantasy career, talk about movies, all that stuff. We're hanging out there and talking about stuff all the time. We'd love to have you. Um, next week will be fun, I would imagine. We'll probably have a bunch of new stuff to talk about. Uh, plus I'm sure more Baldur's Gate to wax philosophical about so uh, we'll see you then in the meantime be good to each other play video games good night bye Bye. suck my (laughs) dick